Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you're having a great time at API World. I'm Abhinav, I'm the founder and CEO of Postman, and I'm going to be talking about how to make great APIs. So as we are at API World, we can agree upon the fact that APIs are pervasive in the modern world. In fact, at Postman, we have a bolder hypothesis. We think that every piece of software is going to be built on uh, APIs, and, and that's how you see modern software being created across the world today. And this has been evident in the growth of APIs, both with respect to external APIs, public APIs, as well as internal APIs. And the screenshot here is back from uh, Programmer Web, and the number of APIs over the world has just kept on growing. And we've seen this quite closely at Postman from our perspective. The Postman started off as a REST client back in 2012, and it has grown phenomenally to more than 5 billion developers now who are using Postman for everything from debugging, testing, uh, to monitoring and publishing APIs. And these 5 million developers create more than 2.5 million collections every month. APIs have become the norm for developers and companies today. So much so that we can actually say that companies have become APIs themselves. All SaaS companies today have powerful APIs through which you can operate their uh, infrastructure. In fact, some companies like Stripe are primarily APIs. Major cloud platforms like AWS, Google, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, all have powerful APIs on which you can build upon or use their services. And companies that we have known for decades are also modernizing their infrastructure. The companies like Reuters, Walgreens, are all opening up APIs so you can use their entire company just with a simple API call. So despite this growth in APIs, you know, we still see that people often say that APIs are really, really hard. And, and it, the, the difficulty in building APIs kind of both, goes both ways. It's both with uh, uh, developers who are creating these APIs on, the, uh, on one end, and then we have uh, developers who are consuming these APIs. And we wondered, you know, why, why is that? And a simple explanation that we kind of came up with was that APIs are both technical abstractions as well as business abstractions. They go through these multiple layers of meaning, and when you have a term that represents multiple things, there is a lot of source for confusion and complexity. And you encounter a lot of challenges when you're building APIs. You can expose internal abstractions that were never meant to go out of your company and uh, just cause some uh, inadvertent behavior on the outside. You might, if you're building an API using a programming language like Java or PHP, those cons constructs and the error messages and the data types that you end up uh, exposing uh, through the API might just cause weird behavior outside. And in some cases, developers might not understand your API at all. And if you're building a complex API, you might still end up building uh, a, a, a complex API for very simple use cases. And that means that your API cannot be extended uh, for, for more and more applications. And this is something that we learned recently, that no matter how good you build the API, how much effort you spend uh, on it, uh, you might still have undocumented services for the API that developers will use and consume and will start depending on it. And once they start depending on an API uh, that you didn't know about, then it will be very hard for you to change that later on. So these are all the challenges that you encounter on just while building an API. On the consumption side, you have a, a bunch of other challenges. So till a few years back, you know, you, you, developers really didn't have any documentation at all to go by. So they had to look for a PDF document or a Word doc to just figure out what's going on with the API. But now, I think it's kind of uh, shifted in the reverse direction where we just have uh, reference documentation, where you have too much to consume and you don't know where to begin. In some cases, developers uh, who are publishers don't share use cases of the API. So people don't really know, you know how exactly am I supposed to use it. They just see a bunch of objects that they're supposed to put together. And if you're uh, expecting that your API should be used for business use cases, you should uh, publish case studies. And if they are not there, then developers will have a very hard, hard time convincing management that, OK, we should be using this API. 
And when it comes to management, if uh, you have not clarified you know, business rules, like what are the rate limits, what are the pricing policies, and what are the constraints on the data that you should be uh, using from that API, then people will not adopt that API. So these are all the challenges that you face on the consumer side. So as we talk to uh, our, our users and customers and listen to these problems that occur over and over again across thousands of uh, companies that we uh, work with, we, we thought of building a framework that, it, that will help us understand this better. And we kind of came up with this idea of uh, seeing API development through the lens of these loops. And the idea of these loops is that you kind of go from multiple abstractions, uh, right from a technical abstraction to a product abstraction to a company abstraction, and you have different people working in all of these layers uh, to, to build the API. And we'll walk, walk through each one of them. So the innermost loop is where developers create uh, APIs through code. So this is where you see a lot of talk around API development, where uh, developers write code, they debug the API, deploy it kind of on their local machines, and the API results uh, in an actual working thing. And this is where the API emerges as a technical abstraction. So we are understanding APIs just because of their technical boundaries. And when this technical abstraction comes in place, you have a whole range of other folks, folks who come in action and provide more things to the API. So these might be folks in, in your QA department uh, who are testing the API, who are making the API ready for consumption to people outside the development loop. You have DevOps who is deploying the API and making sure you know, all these environments are set up. Uh, you have integration engineers who are making sure that this API works with everything kind of around it. So all of these different teams are kind of working together on the API as a technical abstraction and making, uh, enriching it with more and more things. And the end result of all of this is that the API becomes an abstraction that is more like a product. And that's where externally uh, you have this notion that the API is a finished product to be used. People outside this boundary are not going to use, the uh, are not going to care about the internals of this thing and they just want to use it as a finished product. This is where uh, DevRel teams, sales engineers, product marketers are depending on the API and kind of bringing their skills uh, to, to the table. And through their work, uh, uh, through their work, the API becomes a company abstraction. And that's something that uh, is exposed to third party developers. And, and they really don't care about all of these uh, things that are going on inside the company. So they use it just uh, as, if, as if everything is kind of opaque to them. And what goes into building a great API is making sure all of these different loops and layers are kind of hidden inside the abstraction. So as we kind of have this lens, uh, we can think about uh, why do we have problems in the process of API development. So what we'd say is that there is disconnect between loops internally and externally. Whenever you have this disconnect, it's the source of all problems, and that's, that results in issues that come uh, to the fore when you are building and promoting your APIs. And all of this is very similar to building a product, but it affects APIs more, as you can expect, uh, expose internal abstractions externally very easily. Unlike a, a front-end product where you can review what's happening uh, from the outside, APIs are very, very easy to, uh, that it's very, very easy for you to miss things inside the API. You might just have a bad object, you might have certain things that just kind of flow through. And it's just very easy to kind of miss one of these layers, and, and this will be reflected outside to the developer community, and when developers start using it, then uh, you have to support it. And as you can see, that pushing out a public API requires a lot of people to come together and contribute to that API. It's not just a development team that has to make it uh, work just on their own. So how do we go about fixing this? What I propose is that re you review all of your loops, both internally and externally, uh, that are happening in the process of building APIs. You should try to create transparency through communication channels in these loops, and we'll, we'll cover how you can do that in this talk. One of the things that we have seen work really well is getting a dedicated manager to see through all this. And uh, one of the most 
simple things that you can do to make sure you get all your bases covered is just writing stuff down. If you write stuff down at every level, level especially when it comes to API development, you just make sure that you come out with uh, a much more refined communication structure and your teams will just work better and you will make great APIs. So I'd start with uh, uh, certain tips for internal APIs. And uh, one of the things that I've seen work really well is just introducing a change in your API and you can uh, and you try to trace that change through your entire uh, development organization. And it doesn't have to be a big change. It can be a very, very simple, small change. People often think about changing an entire API and seeing how much of their organization needs to be activated. But you just need to think about changing a parameter and seeing which parts of your organization get activated when uh, you introduce this change. And you'll find out a lot. If it requires a big effort in just making a simple change, then probably you need to change the organization itself. You can think about uh, counting the number of meetings that happen when you're building your API. So this is one interesting thing we observe is that in organizations that are API driven, APIs actually supersede meetings. Uh, this actually results in over time you have less and less meetings. But in the process of building and improving your API infrastructure, you have to count the number of meetings that are already happening. There might be stuff going on in these meetings that is undocumented, that's not written, and if a behavior changes at any point in your uh, development process, that change might reflect something badly later on. If you have a public API, it gives you a big opportunity to uh, figure out how well your internal infrastructure is. So public APIs can be used by developers internally to build applications. And you can see the delta that happens when you are uh, build, when you're building your applications on internal APIs versus your external uh, public APIs. Your public API might feel like it's better documented, it has consistent behavior, and if you compare that with your internal APIs, you might find out that they don't hold up to the same standard. And just trying that out by building a simple application will help you go a long way in determining what's happening. And lastly, for internal APIs, put all your APIs in one place. So if you have uh, a service catalog of some sort that's lying somewhere in a corner, maybe you would want to kind of bring it back. Even a simple confluence page that shows you what your internal APIs are will provide people with a system of truth or a system of record that they can go to and find out uh, where to uh, build new stuff from. We have found out in so many cases that there is an API running somewhere where on, on a server which is not documented. It's a very critical part of the infrastructure, but just nobody knows how it works and how it behaves. So moving on to external APIs. So this is something that gets discussed a lot, which is you know, friendly developer design patterns. And typically the debate goes towards, you know, whether should I choose REST or whether should I choose GraphQL. And that debate, while it can eat up a lot of, of your time and you have to be uh, cognizant of it, what I would recommend is not over-investing in any one of these patterns, but still being cognizant of what's going on in the developer community. So if you have picked REST as your uh, API design system of choice, go with that. If you have chosen GraphQL, go for that. And, and both of these things might work really well and will help developers really understand what's going on. But inconsistency between developer uh, de uh, design styles will confuse everybody. Developers don't like unexpected change at all. So if you, if you can clarify the versioning guidelines of your API very, very clearly, it will give a lot of confidence to developers in adopting your API. So uh, there are lots of good practices out there on minor versioning, major versioning, and if you have these expectations clarified up front, then developers can see how they will adopt this through the course of their internal API roadmaps. We have seen this coming through more and more now, where instead of just creating reference documentation, great API publishers 
are creating walkthroughs. You can use that through Postman itself, through run in Postman buttons uh, that you can embed in your developer docs, or even go for creating sample applications that uh, uh, you can uh, host on GitHub or on other services. These sample applications will help developers walk through the first few steps of getting off the ground. You don't have to illustrate a, a really, really big uh, use case at all. Just making sure that they are able to authenticate, they are able to get onboarded, and they get their first few API calls in. Maybe in conjunction with a bunch of other APIs, that'll help you a lot in getting more and more developer adoption. So this is something that we do a lot uh, at, at Postman, and we've seen this work really well, especially if you want to attract developers. Provide a public roadmap. Now, this can be a little scary for companies, like how do we kind of go about doing that? But uh, it goes a long way in building confidence with developers. Not only they, uh, they know the pace of changes and how things are going to change, but they also see what's going to come up in the future. And that kind of closes the development uh, loop in a way where you get feedback from external developers on what to build next. That, uh, that will help you a lot in engaging your community and making sure that you know, they are providing the right amounts of feedback. And just on the notion of feedback, you know, we'd recommend providing a public issue tracker to catch open bugs. This is also something that we do at Postman. In fact, we have started filing all of the bugs that happen on Postman externally, which has built extreme amounts of accountability with our developer team. So, with your public roadmap, you're attracting features. With a public issue tracker, you're attracting bugs. And if you have a dedicated team that's going in and uh, really responding to the developer community there, it will also build confidence. And you might just end up feeding information back into this information uh, into the development loop with your QA, uh, uh, QA team or your uh, developer team, and they can really quickly uh, update your API. Provide a free sandbox to your developers. Now, instead of just launching developers into uh, a production instance of your API, you can just give them a very low-touch sandbox where they can just make some sample calls, get a feel for the API. They don't really have to go through the entire extent of integrating uh, just yet. But just having an environment, a safe environment for them to play in will help your developer adoption. Now, of course, you have your uh, API documentation or your dev portal, which will be linked through probably your marketing website. But there are lots of ways in which your APIs can be exposed uh, to developers. And one of the most interesting ways that we are seeing now is through integration platforms. So there are lots of uh, 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 places where your API can be seen in the context of the workflow that the developer is trying to execute. So places like Zapier are good instances of that where they are trying to make a use case work and they see your API and they can directly integrate with it and they jump to developer documentation, it will really help uh, get them started with, with, right, with the right amount of context. You, have, you also have SaaS software marketplaces now, including the Postman API network, which we uh, allow publishers to come on board for free and they can reach the 5 million developers who use Postman uh, and, and just you know, reach out to them with, with uh, great documentation, walkthroughs and tutorials and attract them to their API. So what we've seen is that bad APIs come from a lack of clarity in the organization's development loops. And this is a good lens that you can adopt very, very easily. You should document and study these loops. They vary from organization to organization. We have seen lots of different kinds of ways. There's no one way that is right and there's no one way that fits every organization. It really depends on whether you're pushing a public API or an internal API, you know, what kind of team structure you have. And if you can feed information back into these loops and map out the changes that are happening in, in this process, that'll help you really understand how, these, uh, how the API goes from a technical abstraction to a company abstraction and uh, make a great API. So that's all I wanted to share. Uh, I'll be hanging out here, and we have our booth right across the hall. Happy to answer questions. Thank you for listening.